everybody blessings to you blessings to you today listen i am talking about supernatural money moving on here on this broadcast and it's amazing what's taking place right now because the angels of god are moving alongside with jesus to accomplish this end time move of the spirit and the Holy Spirit and the angels are not only gathering a harvest of souls, but a harvest of money and wealth and blessing because these are all going to be needed for this agenda that Jesus is accomplishing. You know, you know what's so crazy is that you know, children of God was never supposed to be asking God for a financial miracle. That was never our assignment to ask the Lord for financial miracles. Now, I'm going to say something to you that may be a little shocking too. We wasn't created to ask for miracles. The reason why we have to ask for miracles is because the curse, it wants to sneak into the agenda because of disobedience, because of the first man's sin. But we was never really supposed to be asking God for miracles. We, we were created to be miracles and to create miracles ourselves. That's why Jesus made us. So that we can be like him. So asking God for a financial miracle is not the perfect will of God for your life. You understand this? So when we do ask for a financial miracle, though God will give it to us, he'll lead us to it, he'll uh, direct us to it. It still is not God's perfect will for your life. See, God's perfect will for your life is abundance. His wealth, his riches. A lot of people don't live in it. So when they hear us teaching about it, they fight it. But it's only them broke spirits that fight this. Uh, poverty demons, they hate the idea of wealth. They hate the idea of sowing. It angers them. It makes them frustrated. It bothers them because wealth is an enemy to a demon of lack. And, and, and it torments them is a is a nightmare spirit um or let me say this is a nightmare anointing to the spirit of lack wealth wealth is a nightmare anointing to the spirit of lack uh the prophetic anointing is a nightmare to poverty because the purpose of the prophet was supposed to bring you prosperity so it's shocking that a lot of people don't even like the fact of hearing about money because the prophet came to bring you prosperity. So how could you have prosperity and remove money from the equation, which is impossible? But you was never created to ask God for financial miracles. You have finances that are assigned to your life when Jesus sent you to the earth. Your job is not only to get back your liberty from sin and your soundness of mind, but in your health and your body, but your job is to get back your finances that were created for you to have from the foundation of the world. And finances are a part of your inheritance and the gospel and the power of Jesus Christ and you supposed to have it. You not in a question of whether or not it's a possibility that you're going to have it. Or maybe if God wants you to have it. But he wants you to have it. And saints, let me just tell you this. It's good when we preach on money. Because it, re it, it reveals thieves. All right? See, saints, let me just tell you something. You're going to meet a lot of people in your life that's going to talk a good talk to you. They're going to say a lot of good stuff to you. Some of y'all are married to them because they tricked you. You know they trick you. You know that they're they're scumball. They're 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 goof off. 
you know you know they don't got nothing. They don't got nothing to give to you, but a couple good words. They can't take care of you. They can't do squat for you. There's a word that I call people like that. You you know you know that you meet people like that. They got a good game. Talk to you. They can't do squat, huh? You understand? Uh, now, when we deal with this financial anointing, it's going to show you all the goof-offs in your life. People that are just mocking your intelligence. You know mocking your intelligence means? It means that they're not really about what they're talking about but they 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 are they are flattering you they are charming you they're not really what they're appearing to be see the money cometh anointing is going to reveal to you the goof offs and the clowns and the mockers in your life and the scorners in your life see saints when jesus start talking about money there's an apostolic judgment that's going forth in the earth that's why he started dealing with money. We see that with Ananias and Sapphira. There was a judgment going forth where, where now the Lord was saying, all these people up there singing this song every every doggone meeting. All these people up there jumping around talking, so we praise you, Lord. So now I'm attesting we're giving. So saints, overall, um, you can't even be holy unless you're sore. Sowing make you holy. Overall, you can't even be righteous unless you're a sower. Because if you, righteous means that you're going to do things God's way. And you can't even do God's, things God's way if you're not sowing. So, so, uh, sowing reveals a lot of, a lot of thieves in the ministry. It reveals thieves in your life. It reveals thieves uh, in the religious realm of Christianity because a lot of times people can fake you out with a good song. Huh? Saints, I can't listen to a lot of worship singers. You know why? Because they're always crying about what they're struggling with. Like, come on, man. Like, what? Saints, we live in a world that's governed by weakness. Oh, Lord, I can't help myself, but peace, but peace, I'm begging you, peace, oh, don't let me fall, I fell yesterday, I hurt my kneecaps, somebody give me a band-aid. I fell yesterday. That's how Eddie Murphy sing. They always crying, especially this new generation of, of worship music is always crying. I can't stop doing it, Lord, but you know I love you. You know I love you. I just smoked on yesterday. But you know I love you. How, how you love him and you doing what he don't like? Like, you the only one crazy. You the only one crazy. You the only one that believes that you love him. Nobody in heaven believes that you love God. You the only person that believes that you love God. Because you deceive yourself. If you love him, you wouldn't be doing what he don't like. It's point blank. So I, I don't I don't listen to a lot of these these songs because these songs up there they, they glorify weakness, glorify issues. And see, saints, you don't need to be around somebody like that. When you're around a true apostle, they'll get you higher. When you're around a real apostle, they won't let you so small. They won't let you live small. They won't let you think small. They won't let you talk small. They won't let you hang around the small. When you're around a true apostle, they'll stretch you out of where you 
have grown comfortable with and where people have told you it's okay for you to be. Because listen, you're going to meet some people that are demonic. They're going to they gonna add consent to where you have overspent. Uh, uh, you heard what I said? They'll add consent to where you have overspent. Meaning you was in grade three. You're not supposed to be in grade three no more. You understand? You 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 pass grade three, but they're not gonna tell you that. So so they add consent to where you overspent and they pity where you are as it, as if it's all good and it's not good. Any a, a, anybody that um, is pitying your demons are keeping you broke. Because you got to live a righteous life for Jesus to get riches to you. All right? It's not just sowing money, but sowing money is a major equation to me connecting to an anointing that can keep my mind stayed on Jesus. You understand? It's not just about sowing money, but when I sow money, I'm investing in the fact that I want to be free. I don't want something in my life functioning that's going to stop what Jesus wants me to do. I don't want any thoughts. I don't want any characteristics. I don't want any emotions. I don't want any meditations. I don't want any relationships in my life that Jesus does not want. Because when you sow in, he going to break people off from your life. You'll be shocked who in your life that seem like they they on one accord with you and they not on one accord. Saints, have you ever thought that somebody, they, they had past deception and then you talk to them one day, they still, they still on grade one. You're like, Lord Jesus, I thought you done passed that long time ago. I thought we was flowing. You ever had that happen? If you're a part of my ministry, you're going to have that happen at least once. You're going to meet somebody you thought that they was on the come up. Then you feel, you find out, wow, Jesus, you ain't learned nothing. I guess you're a cheerleader. <laughs> I guess you're a cheerleader. You cheer real good, but you don't hear real good. <laughs> Shoot. Since you ever talked to a cheerleader, they just, shh. drain your batteries out. Huh? Saints, I learned this long time ago. I've been in ministry for a while. You talk to somebody that don't got the same edge you got. Oh, they, they suck the life out of you. Suck, suck the anointing right up. Let me, let me pick another word because some of y'all ain't saved. Dry the anointing right out of you. Oh, I can't pick that either. Let me pick another word because some of y'all ain't. Steal the anointing right out of you. Just steal the anointing right out of you. You trying to talk with them about spiritual things and you can't even talk to them about spiritual things. You, you, you try, you try to take them up to another level. Huh? And, and they, 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 they don't have the, the ability to even go up with you. And it's, it just drained the life out of you. Saints, you know, I made it this far because I didn't talk with people about what I was doing. You know that, right? Saints, Prophet Joshua Holmes wasn't no teenager telling some mom, you know, God told me to sow a seed. Do you think it's the will of God for me to sow? Mom, uh, do you know, I think God told me to do this. Uh, have you ever experienced this? I wasn't that type of person. <laughs> I got my stuff done. I got my assignments done. I didn't have no time to talk to no mama, to talk to no family, to try to find out because I knew that I was going to a place that they never had went. And that was fine. 
Every generation is supposed to go further than the last. So I didn't spend my time trying to talk with them and figure out where they've been because they had they not going where I'm going. Saints, stop frustrating the grace on people's life by sharing stuff with them and they are not going where you're going. If Jesus created you to be a multi-billionaire and nobody that you know is a multi-billionaire why are you sharing multi-billionaire wisdom with them? Now, it's okay for you to give people an introduction. Now, let me just tell you this. People in my ministry, I ain't telling you to be annihilated from this world. You got to understand what I'm saying. I'm not telling you to block off people on Facebook or block off people all around. I'm not telling you that. What I'm telling you is that don't open up doors with people that you know that is against your leader. I'm not telling you to be antisocial, though. I'm not telling you to shut down uh, the avenue of spreading the gospel, because if you only got one follower, that's only one person you're going to reach with this gospel. You, you heard? All right. If you only got one uh, friend, now listen, he, 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 here's where it gets eerie. I'm not telling y'all that got one friend to go and, and, and search for friends. I'm not telling you to do that either. Here's the simplicity of what I'm saying. Just flow. Look at my friend's page. You know why Prophet Joshua don't got, I, I got 4,000 certain friends. You know why I'm not at 5,000? Because I, I dish people all the time. I cut them off from my friends list. And if I show you my friends list, it's over at 1,000. It's over 1,000 requests that I have an answer to. Because sometimes I'm just not in the mood to look at that stuff. You understand? What I'm telling you is that your leader, I know that people are, I know the majority of earth are snakes. But you still reach people with the word. All right? You still reach people with the gospel. So it's okay for you to let certain people in. Now, let me just be raw doggy. You know your body. And when I say body, I'm talking about the structure in which you function. You know your body. So if you crazy and radical and you know that people ain't going to flow with you, it's fine. We don't give two socks or two chains about them not being able to flow with you. That's cool. You know what you rocking with. You know people can't handle you. That's cool. What I'm telling you, saints, is that it's okay for you to share the gospel with people. It's okay. You're not in sin. That's what we're here for. We know we are around a lot of people that are enemies of Jesus, but that's where it is okay. But what I'm telling you is that we still spreading this word in a dark world. So we not utterly shutting off people. What the Bible tells us is to mark those that cause divisions. These are Judases. These are people that are exposed to the truth and then they fight the truth. That's another story. But for people that don't know, we are still reaching out. And let, let, me, let me give you the rundown. I met a young man at the mall. He rolled up on me. He was like, you know, you famous. 
You know, I told her, I said, get your Instagram. I'm on Instagram. So he told me that his friend died in his face. So I'm not a man of much words when I meet strangers. Just one word you. So I told her, I said, I'm going to give you one of my phone numbers. I said, so he went go call me because y'all like to call folk to see if their number is real. Y'all better stop that bull crap. You know we like to lie to you and give you a fake number. <laughs> I'm playing around. You better, you better stop calling the number on the scene. Don't call the number on the scene. Believe what we tell you. Don't call the number on the scene, doggone it. We're playing around. But he called my number. I told him, I said, hey, I don't got that number on me right now. But trust me, it's, 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 it's either home or it's in my vehicle. I said, I ain't got that number on me. So you calling that number, it ain't, ain't going to ring. So when I, I say I'm going to text you, and I'm going to text you word. That's why I'm going to text you. And you all know that that's me because I'm just going to say word. So, so, so the young man, he doing music, you know, he got his gangster music. Oh, yeah. So, he played it for me. He thought I was going to go in on him. I said, man, that's fly, man. The music fly. Dot, dot, dot. You know. All that he, 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 he. All right. So, come to find out, I was like, you know, I'm I'm hitting the studio. Maybe, you know, I retired. I'm a senior citizen. I may. I'm retired. I'm just doing this for y'all. I have retired. I'm the goat at what I do. There's nobody great at what I do. I'm in a league of my own. I done retired. So, come to find out, his producer is a pastor. Now, let me just tell you this. So he say. Let me tell you this. Come to find out. A young man, real big, big, you know, he look like he a grown man and he can run, but he can't, he, he just 16 years old. He's 16. He's 16 years old. I don't even remember, but 16, like 16 is a little baby. Now, I, I ain't saying they do baby things because they be doing grown man stuff. But he's 16 years old. All right? But, so he went through my page and he was inspired by my page. Here's what I want you to see, though. With the persona I carry, I reach people on the highways and byways. Because when they fall in love with me, they really realize that they've fallen in love with Jesus because it's Jesus that has made me the way I am. What I'm telling you is that if I'm somebody that shuts off people, and I got this idea. Everybody's the devil. I ain't fooling with nobody. You ain't going to put no witchcraft on me. Ain't nobody can touch me. Like I, That's the least bit of my worries. Ain't nobody can touch me. Nobody, no, there's no devil that's, that's bold enough to try me like that. I'll, I'll, I don't whoop Satan down too much. I ain't worried about that stuff. What I'm telling you is that 
the assignment is to reach the loss. It's to reach the, the enemies of God. It's to reach the blind. And we are to do that. You understand? And if we in JHM, just know I carry that heavy enough anointing to cover you while we're reaching people. What I'm saying is the discretion is only for people that you know are Judases. You know when somebody is a Judas, you see them in the ministry. They they see all of the power of God. They bear witness. And then they just turn their back on Jesus being a, a retardo. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's who you watch out for. Because fake folk, they're very dangerous. You you because I, I ain't fake. I was thinking about today, man. I was inside the quarters with Dr. Mike Murdoch. I never revealed nothing that Dr. Mike Murdoch, none of his business. And he ain't got nothing wrong going on. He a, he a, he a king. He a divine king. He a man of God. I never reveal nothing to the general public. I never I never share anything. And it's it's is it's, it's just point blank because I'm loyal. You understand? All right. I I never even slipped up and said nothing to ever taint the purity of the man of God. You understand? I never said nothing because I'm loyal. It's just certain stuff you don't do. Like, like I, you know, people, people even like they, they. It's just certain stuff you don't do. And, and if you are a woman of character, if you are a man of character, there's certain stuff that you don't do. And this loy, this loyalty, it don't, it don't matter what you say. If you are a disloyal person, you just a nobody. You just a nobody. You can become somebody, but you are nobody. There's no other way to pit it. Some of you all, you watch Prophet Joshua Holmes all the time. If you ever find yourself wanting to turn against Prophet Joshua Holmes, it just show you who you are. I'm good. I'm here for you. If you find yourself becoming evil, God is showing you who you are. Because you ain't going to stop, ish. So we still going to be going through, man. I'm about to do a meeting. I'm about to do a hot meeting. The meeting going to be real hot. I'm about to release another level of the fire of God. But don't promote nothing. I'm... I'm we ain't promoting none of these meetings. Unless I say. Because only people, only people I want up in there are people that's that's hungry for the new wave of the Holy Spirit. I don't want no big eye looking beavis and belt head looking religious spirit up in there. I don't want you you gonna get jacked up by security. I don't want I don't want I, I ain't Ain't gonna be no dog on spectator. I was nice last meeting. I let certain people in there. I knew knew the niggas was up there spectating. Ain't gonna be none of that in this meeting. If I gotta have a meeting of fifty people, that's full of the Holy Ghost. That's all I'm gonna have. I ain't, I ain't looking for no numbers up there with their big eyed self sitting in the back. Felt like throwing a shoe at him. Or that big eyed self looking in the back up there. <laughs> do my thing when I do my thing. 
do my thing when they do my thing. Fellas, do my thing when they do my thing. Ladies, do my thing when they do my thing. I came to get it pumping. I came to get it pumping. <clears throat> Up there, I met somebody after a meeting. I was at I was at IHOP outside the meeting. So I met somebody. He he was requesting. He was a pastor. He wanted to meet with me. Oh, I would like to meet Prophet Joshua. Huh? So they had told me, oh, he wanted to meet Prophet Joshua. I don't want to meet this nigga. I don't want to meet this nigga. I, I want to go inside. Let me go inside and meet my people. I don't want to meet this nigga. What? Why? You remember we was there. That's a tough son. So, so, so watch this. Watch this. I am such a gentleman. I don't want to meet the nigga. But I still give him a little time. So, I roll up on him. I give him a little spot. Briefly, before I walk in. Five, five seconds. Five seconds into even being in the presence of the man, I could sense that my my time is is is, is potentially about to be wasted. Five seconds, just feeling the atmosphere, just feeling. The spirit of the man is nothing there. Yes, so, yes, so. so I, I, I just let the man. The man said by two words, looked down in his face. I walked off right in front of him. Just walked off right in his face. Ain't say bye, hello, nothing. Ain't say, I ain't say bye, hello. Nice to meet you. Nothing. You just wasting my time. You, 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 you ain't got nothing to say to me. <laughs> I'm just telling you. But see, you meet dusty situations like that. You know how to move wisely with it. You don't let that stop you from ever. Uh, being a vessel for God to use for the loss. Because saints, that's what we're here for. You're going to have those dusty people, those religious people. Don't let them cause you to go into hiding. There's still people that you're going to meet with the gospel that's going to like you. They, listen, I, I don't care who you are. If you're my daughter, if you're my son, and you got my personality, there's going to, listen, I have over 100,000 people on Facebook that I minister to. Over 100,000. Over 100,000 on Instagram. If you connected to me and you have my spirit, my personality in you, and you flow with my wisdom, there's going to be people that's going to like you. I ain't talking about the whole world, but there's going to be people that's going to like you. So, so what I'm telling you is when people are drawn to you, you have enough of my wisdom to not be stupid for them to take you away from me. You have the wisdom to bring them into, into me, the wisdom I carry, the anointing I carry, or you just let them go. At least you allow them to taste. And listen, let me tell you something real powerful. What I'm teaching you is real profound right now, by the way. You know, this is real strong information I'm giving you here. If the person is even looking like they are receiving Prophet Joshua Holmes, don't let that phase you. 
because you can get too emotionally attached to the individual thinking, wow, they're receiving the prophet. They're receiving them. And then they drop by the wayside. And now it affects you. No, no, no. When you working with souls, you got to know how to release your love and release your uh, obedience towards them, but not let your emotional realm get attached to them so that when they break away from your prophet or break away from this introduction to your prophet, that it don't affect you. Because a lot of people do not have long-term consistency. They live their whole life two minutes. Sometimes they was with a man that was two minutes. Everything in their life was two minutes. So don't be shocked when they two minutes too. Everything in their life consisted of two minutes. So you are eternal individual dealing with a two minute individual and you got eternal expectations of them, but they only got two minute responses. Two minute dedication, two minute consistency. So what's going to happen? You got eternal expectation for a two minute individual and you end up crushed for eternity because they don't have the space, the substance to weigh out that expectation that you have. So when, even when you draw people to my ministry, don't be shocked when they fall by the wayside. Number one, Jesus uses you to draw them because they are people that he reaching out to. They messed up. Their mind jacked up. They got all type of issues going on with them, even when they're religious. Because somebody will be smoking a cigarette and still quote Psalm 91 to you. Oh, he that dwelleth. The most high God now. Uh -huh. Now, now uh, 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 he abide underneath the Lord. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It say he abide underneath the shadow of the almighty now. All right, now don't. Don't, don't, don't go against the scripture. Don't go against the scripture. They said, no, 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 no. You got a lot of, you got a lot on you. you know, let me buy it. He that dwelleth, he that dwelleth. And then it say underneath the Lord, underneath the shadow of the almighty. All right. All right, now don't 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 disrespect God's word. We not we not gonna do that. We is not gonna come on. Give, give me a light, huh? Huh? You still got it on you? All right, I, I I get paid next Friday. I get mine. All right. Until then, Bible said, give and give do unto others as you will have them do unto you now. All right, do unto others. If you didn't have a lighter, you will want me to light it up. All right. All right, well, this is my cigarette time. I gave you yours. The Bible said, be at peace with all people. I was at peace with you. Now be at peace with me. Do something for me, OG. Huh? 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 They, listen, they could be sinning against God. They still know how to be religious towards you. So watch this here. You'll meet people. They'll be in sin, but they'll still come to you. And start talking religious with you because they know that you religious. Or not not religious, but you know what I mean. Like you in the, the Christian realm, the Christ realm, the Bible realm. That's how you live your life. So don't be shocked when they start acting that same way towards you. Because people will switch up on you real quick. Man, I have met people telling some, hey man, you trapping that thing. You, you got some green on you? I say, man, I love Jesus, man. I don't got no green on me. Man, the Lord been good to me, brother, man. Ain't he good? Man, you weren't saying that two minutes ago. You were trying to work a deal. 
Now, all of a sudden, now, now I, I hemmed you up. Now, all of a sudden, you the pastor. He woke me up this morning, right? He'll be right there on time. He on time, God. Yes, he is. And he, and he good? Yeah, he good. That's why I ain't smoking. Why are you smoking if he's so good? If you got a revelation how good he is, why you ain't good back to him? Now, could they'll run up on you real strong. You go to the wrong Walmart. Bless me, God. That's why I don't really go to Walmart no more. I, I don't retire from going to stores. I ain't. Shoot. I remember when I went to Zimbabwe, they didn't have no Walmart there. I, when I came back to America, I drove around Walmart three times. People was in the back looking like this. They were, like, why every time I come around, you got to do like this? Put your hand down. Why every time I come around the back, you got to do like that? Put your hand down. I'm going to drive around one more time. What was happening? Shoot, I miss Walmart. Zimbabwe ain't had no Walmart. Shoot. Shoot, I got inside the bus one time. People smell like armpits. That was my last. That was my last time in that daggone bus. The bus came around again. The man gave me a signal. I said, it was a private bus too. Try to give me a ride. I ain't. I ain't taking a ride this time, nigga. Somebody up there, they ain't believe in showers. They ain't believe in showers. Somebody they believe in water. And somebody ain't believe in water. And then saints, you know when you up there trying to ask people where they need to go, huh? You, you trying to ask them for direction. They got the nerves to lift up their hands. No, nah, don't lift up your hands, dog, on it. Tell me with your hands down like this. <laughs> don't, don't up there lift up your hands. You got the nerves to lift them up? No. Tell me like this. And you be trying to signal them. Hold on, before I ask you any question, you see how my arms is? <laughs> the same way my arms is, I want you to follow suit. Let me see your arms be like that. All right, there it is. All right, close them up now. All right. <laughs> I'm about to ask you something. Don't move. Look at me like I'm a cop. And I tell you, don't move. Don't move. All right, we're going to talk like this. All right, don't move your arms. All right, you ready now. Okay, where's the flea market? Don't, don't, don't move now. Wait. The arm just moved. Just stay still. Where's the flea market? All right, it's to the left. Okay, thank you. Stay right there. Wait until I'm five feet away. All right, I'm leaving. Stay. Don't move. Stay. Stay. Stay right there. I'm almost gone. All right. You can move now. <laughs> Shoot. You didn't believe in taking those showers and everybody was all right with it. The shock is not when people overseas be having children. The shock be is how they had children. How did you endure Job chapter 22. Let's go here. I'm in my new Bible.
Let's go to verse 23. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up, and thou shalt put away iniquity far from your tabernacles. See, saints, I want you to see this. It says, if you return to the Almighty, you shall be built up. Let me give you a revelation. Once you return to the Almighty, pray in the Holy Ghost. Don't abandon the gift, the weapon of praying in the Spirit. Because look what it said in Job chapter 22, verse 23. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. If you remember, being built up is also in Jude. Being built up is also in Jude chapter 1. It says, building up yourself, your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I want to teach you, saints, so that we all could uh, uh, be at, at, a, at one accord in this dimension that I'm in. I want, I want some things to take place in your life, and I'm giving you the secret. Some of y'all ask me questions. You ask me, how do I move in the healing and anointing? How do I demonstrate the power and the spirit of God like I do? I'm teaching you with every broadcast. Some of y'all want the power, but you still sour. You don't want to do what it takes to get here. Some of y'all want this power to flow and just by lip's sake. And you not no sower. You don't honor God with nothing. You want to still invest every other place. And you don't want to support the gospel. And then you want to move in what I'm moving. That's the damn shame that I'm trying to set you free from. I'm showing you what I do. It's more than just up there praying. Oh, 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 oh. That's what the deceivers do. They just got a mouth. They don't got no heart. You understand? That's why they deceive themselves. <clears throat> I'm showing you what the Holy Spirit had me to do. To unlock his power, not just for money, but unlock his power for healing. Unlock his power for deliverance ministry. I don't want to hear that you casting out no devils and you can't cast out no financial devils. Because if that power... Is really real. It should be able to cast out anything. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me now. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. No, no, no. No, I can, I can talk like this. Because I've seen the power. <clears throat> be real, not only to cast out devils. But to cast out financial devils. To cast out lack. To cast out poverty. To cast out debt cancellation, debts in your life. I've seen it happen. So don't tell me that you, you got all this power and you, you can't control this financial realm. A lot of people like to do that. You're so powerful, but you ain't got no money. <coughs> or you're so wise, but you ain't got no money. How many times you heard somebody up there tell them, hey, you want to meet this wise man? He up there sitting outside in the box smoking a cigarette. And they telling you, you want to talk to him? That man ain't got nothing to say. <clears throat> I met people like that as I was growing up in finances. They would come on the scene. They telling me, oh, you wise, wise, wise. They don't got nothing to say. Job chapter 22. 
<coughs> Job chapter 22, verse 24. Then shall thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. This God talking about large wealth being in your hands. Large money being in your hands. This is the power of God for riches. Look at verse 25. And the almighty shall be your defense. You shall have plenty of silver. Now, now, this is God telling us that plenty of money is going to take place in our life. Plenty of money. I done seen this happen. I don't I don't have to question <clears throat> is this real? I don't have to question is this really an anointing? I've seen this take place. And this is your time to have this. God wants you to have this plenty of money anointing. Look what it say. Thou shalt lay up gold as dust. This large money. Man, I, I'm going to get this word out. Shoot. We're going to take a we're going to take a one minute break. I'm going to get this word out. These these Negro demons is not gonna stop. One minute break. I'm gonna get this. Is not gonna stop. These these Negro demons. One Negro demons. I ain't I ain't playing no games. I'm gonna get this word out.
So we in Job chapter 22. Now, when we dealing with prosperity favor and the sowing angels, it was a revelation that God gave me last night about sowing angels because I've experienced these angels in my life that whisper seed amounts. They tell you what to do financially to cause money to flow in your direction. They, they master in the wisdom of God for the economy. They know what he likes. They know what he's looking for. They know what he's uh, signaling you. So God won't visibly be saying all the time, so this, so this. But the angel already knows. So they'll give you signals. So they'll push you into the right seed. They'll push you into the right job. Because they know that you have to be empowered uh, to sow. That you have to be empowered to give bountifully. So they know that you need financial empowerment on the earth. And that's what the sowing angels do. They give financial empowerment. And they give you the power to sow beyond your ability. They give you the power to sow beyond your own understanding. Because they know that you have a destiny and a, a, a harvest that can't be aborted. They know that there's finances that God has for you that can't be aborted. So they don't let you miss the moment. I've had that happen a lot in my life. Where I sowed seeds that weeks after I sowed it, I said, wow, what if I would have missed? <clears throat> when I was at Dr. Mike Murdoch Church and I sold that big seed, that was a spur of the moment seed. God didn't speak that to me before I went in there. It was when I was inside that God said, uh, would you go this far? It was spur of the moment. Most times you sow your largest seeds at the spur of the moment. That's why the devil going to come back and fight you and tell you, oh, why did you do that? You stupid. You should have had did that. You could have bought this. You could have did this. Now you ain't got none. That's why he come and mock you because Jesus gets us to sow our biggest seeds at the spur of the moment. You contemplate a large seed. You see how the devil put all type of stuff in your head. Now, even when you do sow the seed, you got all this filth that you got to cast out. Because you don't let yourself, listen, saints, you can't be wealthy if you can't rule this mind. You got to get this mind right. If you can't rule this mind, how are you going to handle the large money bags of Jesus? Because this mind is stupid. This mind will make you a dummy. Saints, I've seen people in my life, they 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 went the fuck, man, they went, y'all know people that go to the extreme, now they like dummies now. Oh, this is God, this the power of God, I was there. This was the fire of the Holy Spirit, I was there. This was the fire of the Holy Ghost, I was there. Retarded. Retarded. 
Go change your name to retarded. First name retarded, middle name stupid, and you can change your last name to whatever you like. Mandingo or one of that. This mind is stupid. You got to train this mind. You got to fix this mind. You got to rule this mind if you're going to carry the large money that Jesus wants you to have. So God gets us to sow these large seeds because we're moving with an angel. And Jesus spoke to me about sowing angels. Sowing angels, they move with you so that you can sow beyond your ability. When you start sowing hundreds of dollars into the gospel, when you start, listen, your seed count should be hot all the time. Meaning you shouldn't look at your seed account three months and it say zero. Oh, that's bad. If you look at your seed count and, and, and it's not moving you, See, saints, we in a sowing kingdom. And when the church in Acts chapter four got the revelation that they were sowing their way out, all of them experienced Jehovah Jireh taking over their life. All of them begin to see the hand of Jehovah Jireh making them rich, making them prosper, making them have abundance, making them have more than enough. The hand of Jehovah Jireh took over their situation and all of them lived in supernatural abundance and supernatural money. All of them. All of them moved into grace for riches. All of them had the grace for more than enough. All of them was moving in the economy and the invisible account of Jesus Christ. The money ministry of Jesus and angels were at work strongly in Acts chapter four. And all of them was recipients of that grace and that power. Praise God. Your apostle comes to challenge you. Your apostle comes to challenge you. So the challenge is your love for God, your worship, your honor, your loyalty, your consistency. Your apostle will come to challenge you. And let me tell you something. Oftentimes, women and men stay broke because they don't have a seed challenger. They don't have nobody. Watch this. Look at one of those fast Dodge cars. They're called the Dodge Challenger. Why is it that a car that goes extremely fast have a name called challenger because unless you are being challenged nothing in your life is going to accelerate you're going to go at the same cursed speed as your great grandfather your great grandpapa that never encountered jehovah jireh and the blessing of god and the supernatural word of the lord coming to pass in their life they never saw what the blood of jesus paid for them to possess the reason why that car is called the Challenger, because when you have a Challenger, you have a fast vehicle that goes beyond the speed that is uh, that is acquainted that uh, uh, that is common, and for you to go beyond the speed that's common. Financially, 
the Lord will send you an apostle, Joshua Holmes, to challenge you, to stretch you, so that you won't be on cruise control financially, but you'll go beyond the normal speed of everybody else. And the Lord will be able to take you faster and further than those that have gone before you. Because saints, this wealth that Jesus has is greater than the wealth that Abraham carried. And we all know that Abraham was very rich. This wealth that Jesus has is greater than the wealth that Solomon carried. Now you see Job 22 verse 24. Then thou shalt lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. It says thou shalt lay up gold as dust. Gold as dust. Let's go to Job chapter 42. Let's go to verse uh, 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Okay. Now we see Job stepping into another dimension of the money ministry of Jesus and angels. I'm in Job 42 verse 10. Why would the Bible say, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before? Wait, if having stuff is evil and wrong and not of God, and this is a man of God and he got plenty of stuff. The Bible then says, Job received twice as much. Oh my God. Saints, the Bible said the Lord gave him twice as much. So he was already the richest man for on the east. Now God gives him twice as much. Twice. Twice. How is the... Watch this here. Let's go to verse 11. Then there came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters... They all had been acquaintance before and they did eat bread with him and they comforted him all over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. That the Lord had brought upon him. The Lord brought the evil. Every child of God must get a revelation of this. The Lord is the one that brought the evil over him. He sold. He still remained committed to the Lord. See, saints, let me tell you something. That's why your walk with God is your walk with God. Don't worry about what people say about you because even when the Lord would decide to bring evil over you, he looking and testing you to see. That's my girl. I know she going to stand up for me. That's my man. I know he going to stand up for me. That's my son. I know because he done taught you what you need to know. Now look at this. Here go money cometh. Every man also gave him a piece of money. And everyone an earring of gold. Oh, sucky, sucky now. Oh, sucky, sucky now. Oh, sucky, sucky now, now. Oh, you religious people can suck a toe. Oh, that felt good telling you that it's suck a toe. Look at this. Look what Job chapter 42, verse 11 says. It says that they also gave him a piece of money and everyone gave him an earring of gold. Earring. Wait, they gave a man of God an earring of gold? Oh. Maybe his name wasn't Job. Maybe his name was Prophet Joshua Holmes. Maybe, 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 
maybe, maybe his name wasn't really Joe. Maybe, maybe just shoot. Maybe that was me in the scripture. Ah, huh? ah. Uh, uh, here go money cometh. Every man also gave him a piece of money. I want you to see this. At the beginning of Job, he was sowing. At the end of Job, now he saw. Write this down, sons and daughters. When you are faithfully sowing, Jesus will convert you from just being a sower to becoming soul. He'll convert you. You'll not only just be a sower, now you'll be soul. And people will sow their seed into you. God will make people invest into you. Every sower need to hear this. If you faithfully move as a sower, God will make you soar and he'll cause men to give into your bosom. This one of the most powerful things that you need to know about sowing is that while you're sowing money, there is a destined time by Jesus Christ where people are going to sow money into you. And he's setting you up. He's setting you up. I don't care who you is. You can be somebody that's least liked at your workplace, your family, your city. Jesus will take over people and they will sow into you. If you don't sow nothing in Jesus, he ain't got nothing to bless. He ain't got nothing to multiply. He ain't got nothing to release back into your life. But if you give, it shall be given unto you. Ain't no demon can stop this. No witchcraft can stop. It shall be given. It shall be given is greater than your greatest adversary, your greatest enemy, your greatest liar, your greatest false accuser. Job had a false accuser saying that he slept and raped her. He didn't rape her and he got locked up and still got his money. Oh, Jesus. Somebody shout somebody. He still got his money. He still became the governor over wealth and he still had all the finances over the land. It did not stop him from it shall be given. Nobody can stop you from it shall be given. If you sow, it shall be given is your reward. Ain't no demon can stop it. No spirit can stop. It shall be given. It's going to happen for you. You just got to stick with the seed. See, a lot of people, they fall off when God start talking about sowing because they really don't love God. All they love is their selves, their children, their family. Oh, everything else is, is what they love. Jesus is secondarily. He lasts. Then they want Jesus to pit them first financially. When he start handing out checks in the mail. Oh, I'm ready for my, I'm ready for my miracle. When he, when he handing out miracle money. Oh, I'm ready for my miracle. When he handing out wealth. I'm ready for my miracle. But you're not a sower. This is only for the seed sowers. This is for those that really love God. They don't just love them with their mouth. They love them with their body. They love them with their giving. They love them with their sowing. They love them with their honor. Anybody can say, I love you, Lord. I honor you, Lord. But, but what your seed account say? You know that you love God. Look at your sowing account. Your sowing account will let you know if you love God. We got all type of people up there don't don't wanna 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 hear about no seed. What what the hell are you up there talking some you love the Lord on your page for? Up there talking some oh Jesus he can have all of me. Use a dag on life all head Shaquita. He can't even have two dollars.
We got men up there telling us, oh, I love you, Lord. Woman up there, oh, I lift my hands to you. You can have all of me, Father. You can have all of me, Father. He can't even have your money. Your money is lesser than you. See, see, this is what a lot of people don't catch. Your money is lesser value than you. So if he can't even have your money and you tell him something, you're going to give him you, use a doggone bipolarism. I ain't say you bipolar. I said use a doggone bipolarism. Huh? And, and, and Zion, I ain't talking about you, son. You good. When I talk strong on here, when I talk heavy on here, some of y'all got to catch me. I ain't talking to you. I'm, I'm talking to them. I'm talking to people that don't sow. I, 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 there's sun in the room. I'm talking to the spirit. I'm talking to a principality demon. You understand? Because a lot of principalities be on people's soul and they never sow. You understand? And they up there, they the first ones talking, so I want God to use me. He don't want to use your broke behind self. Because you, you, you the type that already just showed him that he can't even get money out of you. You understand? Uh, how he going to use you? And he can't even use what you got. And you, what you got is lesser than you. So, so, so there's people like that that are liars. Oh, I just want the Lord to get the glory out of my life. I just read yesterday what the glory of Lebanon meant, right? How many people you hear say that? I want it. I want the Lord. I just want the Lord to get the glory. I just want the Lord to get the glory out of my life. That's all I want. I don't want nothing else. I just want him to get the glory out of me. Then he tell them to sow. And they won't sow. Him getting the glory out of you is him getting everything that's valuable. Your money, your substance, all that you possess. When the Bible said the glory of Lebanon shall be given unto you. The glory of Lebanon is all of the wealth and riches in Lebanon. And some people, you hear them say all the time, I just want the Lord to get the glory out of my life. They say, Father, I'm giving you all the glory. And the father looking at them like, Michael, ain't this what I said in the word? They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Far. So an angels will keep you from that realm. So an angels, they come to make you excited about the seed. So you'll find yourself having such uh, uh, extensive joy about sowing. You'll find yourself becoming so happy about giving. You'll, you'll actually be overwhelmed with the desire to sow. You'll start dreaming about sowing. You'll fantasize about sowing. Saints, I had a lot of fantasy seeds. Like if I could just sow that thousand. If I can just sow that 2000, if I could just sow that 500, I had a lot of fantasy seeds. See, when you have sowing angels on your life, with your life, you'll have fantasy seeds. Where you fantasize about sowing a certain amount. It becomes a fantasy. You'll start thinking about, hey, oh, I wonder what if I hit that right there. Oh, jeez. Oh, I hit that. Oh, I'm about to tear that. And you're talking about the, the seed. See, some of y'all ain't saved. You ain't saved. You're talking about the seed. 
Because you, you fantasizing about worshiping the Lord. Huh? You in a fantasy mode of how to worship the Lord. Hmm? Hmm? You in a fantasy mode of how to pour out your alabaster box because your seed got to smell and, and the Lord know when he smell millions. When he smell millions, he released that multimillionaire anointing on you. And, and that happens when you're sowing strong. What I love about Jesus is he's no respecter of persons. So he, he not going to mistreat you and disregard your sowing and let it let it be overlooked. He going to give you what's rightfully yours. He going to make sure you get what's rightfully yours. The Lord will not disregard your sowing. When you sowing right and you sowing into the right man of God, he will not disregard your sowing. Let's go to Psalm chapter one, verse two. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law does he meditate day and night. See, when you love the word of God, watch what happens. Let's go to verse three. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living rivers of water. Now, let me tell you about verse two. Let me tell you about verse two. His delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law, he meditates day and night. Why did it say he meditates? That's dealing with your mind. Here's the revelation, sons and daughters. Before you can carry wealth, your mind has to be right. Like I was telling you in the earlier part of the broadcast. Your mind can't be crazy. Before you can carry wealth, you have to know how to rule your mind. And saints... Some of y'all can stop your money from flowing because your mind is messed up. Some of you women up there tell us, I need to lose weight. I got back fat. Ain't nobody looking at your dad going back fat. That back fat can work for your good in the future. You never know. You up there telling us, I got you this baby. Now, girls, stop worrying about that. Satan will put anything in your mind to occupy your mind so that you won't get your money. He'll put anything in your mind so that you won't meditate about your wealth covenant. Now, take care of your health. I believe that. I believe in taking care of your health. Because if you're going to move with money coming, you want longevity to this. You don't want Satan to try to take you out with some cancer or all that bull crap. I ain't dying from none of that bull crap. Wish it would try to bother me. You beat the brakes off of that demon. We're not dying from none of that. And saints, we can live 120 years if Jesus don't uh, appear. We can live 120 years, blessed, no sickness, no issues, full sight, full health. We just got to listen to the Holy Ghost with our, with our eating, our drinking, our, our decisions. You know, I believe in eating healthy. Holy Spirit told me, I want you to eat cream of wheat in a time where I usually eat meat. <laughs> Shoot. In the time I usually would eat meat and all that stuff. Man. But see, I'm moving into my next meat in here and my stamina is wild. Saints, you ever, you saw how much 
I pray for all them people in 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 uh in Texas, in Atlanta, Georgia, releasing straight power of God. My stamina is wild. See, God going to bless you financially, but your health going to have to be on point too. So some of you women and men on here, don't be up there letting God give you no million dollars and you up there got daggone two minutes left on your life. Sure, you get the two minutes. Ooh, ooh, you done shouted. Ooh, ooh. All of a sudden, you done had a heart attack because your, your blood pressure was high. Doggone it, now the money got right back into the satanic kingdom. Doggone it. You done shouted too loud, your blood pressure couldn't contain it. Some bull crap, man. Now Satan in his kingdom got right back the money. The money got right back into the satanic kingdom. Health and wealth are divine blessings of seed sowing into your profit. It's the profit's reward, health and wealth. Write that down. The profit's reward is health and wealth. Health and wealth. Health and wealth. Health and wealth. Every now and again, eat you some fruits. Every now and again, you ain't got to eat you something, get you some lettuce or something. Every now and again, I'm all down for eating meat. Cause, cause you gotta have balance. You need that protein. Some of y'all, you're too dang gone skinny. Up there skinny like that, do you skinny like a tadpole? Then if your man try to make love to you, he can he done, done broke your dog on bones. You up there filing domestic violence, filing domestic violence. Telling some he 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 he, he choked you. Tom, so he daggone choked you. You up there before the courtroom. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I, do you vow to tell the truth and whole truth? So help me God. Yes, Your Honor. I vow to tell the whole truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Uh, we have a case in here today. Your woman said that you pitched your hands around her. You didn't wash your hands that night. You had oil grease because you was a mechanic that night. Is that right? Is that about right? Yes, Judge Joe Brown. <laughs> Yes, Judge Joe Brown, that's correct. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> you had chicken and all grease on her. She said, he said, he said, she said, the cops came out. When they came out, found out there was some oil grease. <laughs> all right. From the transmission fluid. The transmission fluid. Found out that it was around her neck. Was Is that correct? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Yes, Judge Joe Brown. Yes, Your Honor. Well, what was you thinking? Your Honor, I just had, I just had put my hand out the transmission fluid. I was about to go, you know, to my... You know, I, I I was going through a hard time in life. I need some comfort. Why did you pitch your hands around her? <laughs> Judge Joe Brown, I, listen, this wasn't the first time. Uh, there was times before, but 
she had lost some weight. That's what happened. And what happened is when she stopped eating meat, she went on a meat fast. She had met some vegetarians. I think they tried to destroy her. She met some vegetarians. They told her, don't eat meat no more. And they begin to tell her about how, you know, it's time to clean up the planet. And, uh, you know, the, the, the end was about to come and we should have some new uh, green, green, green energy and all that type of stuff. And, well, what does that got to do with you pitting your oil grease around the neck? What, Judge O'Brien, that's what I'm telling you. Your Honor, she lost weight around her neck. She she lost she she lost she lost weight around her neck. All right. So so when I when I went to go grab her neck, it it it, it, it she took abuse. What do you mean that she took abuse? She took abuse. She took a take abuse because when I went go grab her neck, <laughs> there was no support as it was before, and the neck had got shorter. Well, what that got to do with you putting your hands around her with all transmission fluid grease around your hands? Your Honor, that's what I'm telling you. Her neck, her neck, it wasn't me. It was really the neck. The neck caused the bruises and it caused my hands because it was slippery. It went around the whole neck. So I knew something was wrong when my fingers touched my wrist. Because <laughs> he... Either her neck had got small or it disappeared. <laughs> I knew something was wrong, Your Honor, when my <laughs> when my fingers touched my wrist, because that meant that her neck had went all the way around. By the time, Your Honor, the police was outside the door, they took me in custody. Psalm chapter 1, verse 3. Look what happens when it says that you get control of your mind. It says you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bring forth his fruit in season. <laughs> so God is telling you that you're going to have abundance. You're going to bear fruit. You're going to have something visible. You're going to have some money. You're going to have some substance. Look what happened. He, his leaf also shall not wither. It's telling you that you're not going to have no backlash. You're not going to lose what you done produce. See, saints, a lot of you are, you lose what you produce because you are not meditating on God. You're meditating on all type of stuff that is unnecessary, is not what the Lord wants you to think about, and it's jeopardizing your fruit that you produce, and it's making you go backwards instead of forward. You done made a good decision. You done followed the Holy Ghost. Now you're not protecting your mind. Now the devil trying to destroy everything that you done produce. Since I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, what, what I'm telling you right here is so powerful. There's the power of God in this. Because you can produce so much. And then the devil can take the very same thing that you produce and use you to destroy it. You already said, Peter, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now the devil is using this girl and you saying, I don't know who Jesus is. I was never with him. Look, look, look. The devil using you to destroy what you already said that he was the Christ. This says, and I've been in ministry. I've done seen this happen to so many people. It's sad, man. People choose the devil over Jesus. They're disloyal. And Satan hates you. He don't like you. He want to destroy you. How could you agree with him? 
John the Baptist, you just said he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of this world. Now you're in jail. Is he the Christ or should we expect somebody else? With your same mouth, Satan is using you to destroy what you done produced. With your same mouth, you destroy the very same thing that you have built, you have created, you have produced. With the same mouth, with the same mouth, Wow. Look, look what I have in my book. I talk about God purging the mind of a woman. <coughs> it says agreement with God purges the mind of a woman. Is it my book? Some of y'all ain't got my book. Some of y'all got my book. I don't want to hear about you struggle. Because I got every single thing that a woman deals with in my book. Some of y'all going to hell because you don't use what God gives to you. And then you sit right there, let the demon beat the brains out of you. And then you act like you ain't got no defense system. This doggone book that I wrote. I don't want to hear no doggone woman felling in my ministry. I out and don't do doggone write me talk to prophet. Well, how do I deal with this spirit? I got it in the doggone book. Every single demon that you're going to face, I got it in the book. I talk about it from depression to insecurity, to jealousy, to witchcraft, to Jezebelism, all of that. I talk about it in the book. I dealt with every demon spirit that a woman deals with. Even demons that are assigned to her period. Some of you women up there telling us, I'm always consistent. I don't never have no bipolar ways. You was a doggone liar. I don't care what you say. You put that good face on all you want. Every woman got time where 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 God going to test her. He going to test her. And he going to let the devil come with some stuff. See what you going to do. You be up there all messed up. Your husband be asking you, how you doing, baby? And thing. You okay? Yes, I'm okay. Are you really okay? I'm okay. You really okay? I'm okay. Are you really okay? Are you really okay? I'm okay. Are you okay? Any are you okay? Any are you okay? Are you okay? Any any are you okay? Any are you okay? Are you okay? Any you've been hit by okay, all right, listen, I'm about to go about to shoot you. No, I, no, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, even, even when Zendaya, when Zendaya have, Zendaya have moments where she want to, she, 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 she want to be confident. I ain't got no issue with that. That's what Jesus told me. He said, this is a woman. I'm not talking about age. I'm talking about category. It's a female, every woman. So you can't get mad at the little baby and say, oh, you're not, you're not. No. They want to be comforted. What you going to get mad at the baby? The baby ain't doing nothing. It's just being a self. Listen, you going to call a baby that's crying? You going to tell the baby that they got demons because you're spiritual? No, the, the baby is crying. You don't know why they're crying. They might be crying because they're hungry. They might be crying because they need a diaper change. They might be crying because they, 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 they feel uncomfortable. They might be crying because they're too hot. They might be crying because they're too cold. They might be crying because the devil is trying to fight their little minds. 
There's a many reasons why. Why? So watch this here. Having children make you wiser because they help you deal with people too. Patience. Patience. What happened when you having your bad day? Jesus deal with you. He don't, he don't spank you, knock you over the head. Think about that. What happened when you get discouraged? You hear bad news. Watch. Some of y'all go to the doctor right now. They tell you, hey, you got six months to live. You got cancer. Oh, what you going to do? I got Twinkies in the back. What you going to do? What you going to do? Mess up your whole day. You up there calling all the press. You know, they call me and call me and tell me I got six months to live. They call me and tell me I got six months to live. I don't know what to do. I done did everything the Lord told me to do. I done did everything the Lord told me to do. Why is this happening to me? I done told everybody that Jesus loved him. I'm doing. Why you done switched up all of a sudden? You was good. Just because the devil come with a bad report, it done affected your whole faith in God. It done took away your whole bad, your, your, your whole boldness, your whole blessed mindset. Don't let that switch you. Don't let it change you. Stay consistent with the Holy Ghost. Stay consistent with the Spirit of God. See, Sowing angels, they birth consistency in your sowing. They birth consistency in your sowing. So when you got sowing angels in your life, you'll find yourself not missing. When God moves you to sow, you sow. When he moves you to give, you give. Uh, you're not pulling back on Jesus. You flowing with him. The sowing angels... They add boldness to your seed giving. So you'll sow at higher amounts. Uh, they'll give you favor with workplaces because they know that that's how God going to uh, facil facilitate the seed to you. Going to facilitate the seed to you. So you're going to end up having the seed levels increase in your life. Now, let me just tell you something. Sowing $100 seeds, it, it, it taps your faith. It makes your faith start to jump. Because $100 is a whole hundred. You could have bought gas. You could have bought clothes. You could have bought food. You could have bought shoes. All that stuff. But when you pit the $100 into Jesus, the $200 into Jesus, all that different stuff, you letting Jesus know, hey, you my source, Lord. I trust you. I know you got me. I could do this myself, but I'd rather do it into you and let you do it for me. Because you want the riches and the wealth that you ain't got to worry about. Look what it say. His leaf also shall not wither. If you keep your mind, you got to keep your mind right. While you sowing, protect your mind. Meditate in the word of God. Fall in love with this Bible. If you're watching me on your phone, you can also uh, get scriptures on your phone. All right? Meditate on this word and get excited about this word. Don't let your mind drift off from you because there's a time where Satan is going to attack the sower. And when he attacks the sower, he aiming for your mind. Because once he mess up in your mind, you can't sow. That's what he do. He cripple you. He pours in your mind. Now your seed is eating. Now you start eating your seeds. Now you're not sowing your way out because he done crippled your mind. He done put poison in your mind. And once he get the poison in your mind, now your hand is poison. You can't sow. So you got to be real cautious of that. Um, I love sowing. I love sowing. Praise God. I was thinking about how my mama took care of me. My mother took care of me. I, I'm i the only one in my mother's life that decided that I, I wasn't going to leave her stranded. And God let it be like that. Because even God, 
Even though it wasn't a command, it was still a test. God, look, see. Okay, son, let me see. With all your busy schedule, with all that you going and you doing, let me see if you're still going to be faithful. I, I stay faithful. Good. Shoot. I told one of my sons, more of my sons were telling me that they stay with their mother. I ain't, I ain't telling you no business. I ain't telling you who it is. I got many sons. One told me they stay with their mother. They said, can I help my mom? I said, help your mama. It's fine. It's fine. Ain't no issues. Ain't no issues. God will help you get seed to sow. He'll, he'll help you. And you, you, you know, you, you can help her. Shoot. You, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta realize that money is not always for you. Some of the money get in your hands and then you got other people that think that every dollar that get to you belong to them. You gonna have people like that when God make you wealthy. And most, and most times it's your family members. They find out that you, you, you got 500,000 or you got 300,000 or you got 100,000 or you got 50,000. They think that every time you get money it's for them. Especially them Negroes in your, 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 your family that are always going to jail. How many of y'all ever had somebody that want them to, want them to hold, they want you to hold them down every time they go to jail? Oh, you ain't bail me out? Fool, and I ain't tell you to go steal them hot Cheetos out the, out the dog on CVS. Up there, they got you. You ain't even wear a ski mask. I bought you a ski mask for Christmas. Told you to put that mug on. Shoot. Told you to put the daggone ski mask on. You ain't following instructions. <laughs> you ain't following instructions. Put the doggone ski mask on. Everybody know you got a bald spot at the top of your weed. Shoot. I'm going to talk some income tax time while you ain't bail me out. I bailed you out when I bought you the ski mask. Put the daggone ski mask on. A doggone ball spot up there trying to rob the place looking like Dennis Brown robbing. Trying to rob the place. Try up there. Uh, the cash register man, he older in years. He try to come out. He got arthritis of the knees. He up there. She spin around in the camera. He She done Allen Iverson him. Done broke his ankles like she playing basketball. The judge asked her, we got a tape of you inside <laughs> on the CVS. You turned around and the man fell over to the floor. Tell me what was taking place right here. Why did you cross him up? Up there, you done crossed him up in the in the store. Listen, and, and you're going to have people that's going to come to you think that every dollar that you get belong to them. That, that's what they believe in their mind. Listen. Do you know why people become thieves? Because in their mind, something takes place where they really believe that stuff belongs to them and they take it. No, no, saints. I'm not talking about, you know, somebody da da da. You know why people become professional thieves? Like, I mean, like they thieve all, they, they are thief, they are thief all the time because in their minds, saints, I don't argue with certain people because I know how their mind think. So I, I ain't going to spend my time trying to. Saints, that's why when I meet strangers, I'm good because I, I know what I'm dealing with. Listen, if you if you ever try to argue with somebody that is a thief, they're going to tell you, listen, I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? I ain't take no $20. And they took the $20. Listen. Shoot. 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 Listen, I ain't talking about nobody that no prophet Joshua owns. If you ever met me before and you took $20, I ain't talking about you. <laughs> I'm talking about people on the outside. Now, since I cut my hair and all that, I did my hair and all that. Since I was inside of a store, right? That I, I was inside of a store. The man gonna come up to, to me, Tonson. Ooh, who did you hear, young blood? Tonson, who did you hear, nephew? He said, yeah, yeah, ooh, it looked nice. Then I told him I did it. 
Then he doubled back and came back to him. You know this stuff will eat out your hair, right? You know that stuff will eat out your hair, right? Look at my hairline. It's way back here. I say, sir, yes, sir, like this. I'm like, well, that's you. You connected to LeBron James. I ain't got no affiliation. I'm in the King James Bible. That ain't got nothing to do with what I'm rocking with. Now, here's, here's, here's what we're going to help you out with, sir. <laughs> so, kind of find out he was talking about the spray, but I don't use that spray. <clears throat> I don't use that spray. So, he was trying to tell me that the spray... Now, listen, low-key, it turned into some jealousy. Because first, he was telling me my hair look all fleek. Now, he trying to discourage me not to wear my hair like that. I just played it off. Just looked over and said, yeah, you hear what he said? He said that. Yeah. Yeah, you right, OG. Yeah, he said that. Just no, spray no more. Throw that spray away. Yeah, OG. Then every time, every time he keep calling me his nephew. Yeah, nephew. How's I'm your nephew? How's I'm your nephew all of a sudden? I, I turned into his, his nephew all of a sudden. I'm sorry, I'm his nephew. Every statement they finish, yeah, nephew. How old is your daughter, nephew? She's seven months, nephew. All right, nephew. How much is it, nephew? All right, see you later, nephew. Oh, oh, oh you just dropped your wallet, nephew. All right, that, 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 Jesus is coming back, nephew. All right, you got a lot on your nephew? All right, never mind. All right, nephew, I see you. You ain't, you ain't with it. I thought you was about it, about it. <laughs> I thought you was about it, about it, nephew. Maybe hmm. we started thinking about nephew Tommy. <laughs> now look at this. Psalm 1-3, it said, whatsoever you do shall prosper. Now saints, this, I, want, I want to deal with this anointing here. And, and, and everything, it said, whatsoever you do shall prosper. I want you to remember this. If you will keep your mind in the stream that Jesus wants it to go and you sow your way out, everything you do will prosper. Every single thing you do will prosper. I want you to remember this. That means that the Holy Ghost, here's what this means, whatsoever you do will prosper. The Holy Ghost will not let you partake or involve yourself in anything that's going to destroy your money your mind, and your mantle. Write that down. Write that down. Write that down. Say, it's this real powerful. The Holy Ghost will not let you involve yourself in anything that will destroy your money, your mind, or your mantle. Nothing, 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 nothing. Whatsoever you do with prosper mean that Jesus is going to give you total success. He's going to make whatever you put your hands to work and then you're going to have prosperity in money. And money prosperity has no limit. You can have how much money you want. No, nothing can stop you from having the money prosperity that God wants you to have. You can go up in the financial level more and more and more. And the financial anointing does not have a limitation. It doesn't just have a certain amount. You can go as far as you want in finances. You can have how much you want in finances. But listen, if you are going to make it in this, you have to have your mind made up that you're going to have strong sewing hands. If you don't got up in your mind that you're going to have strong sewing hands, you're going to miss this type of anointing because it requires consistency. It requires the continuance of sewing because sewing is like a workout. It's a muscle that God has given you. And once that muscle is built up, it can carry wealth. It can carry the money bags. Once your muscles are there, God can plant finances on you and he can make deposits. When you sow in seed into your man of God, you open an account. 
where Jesus can make deposits supernaturally whenever he feels like it, whenever he wants, and whenever he desires. When that account is open, he can release deposits to you. The life, the, the time in your life where you're not making money is the time where your life slows down. If you don't got seed to sow, it should concern you because you have nothing to crush the head of the serpent. Nothing. So that means that the serpent, who, which is the spirit, the serpent is the spirit that stops my provision. It's the spirit that stops my money. Uh, so I have nothing to crush the head of the very spirit that makes me miss out on the blessing of God. Jesus has a supernatural riches economy. And in this economy is all the money that you ever desired, all the money you ever wanted, all the money you ever dreamed about is in this economy. See, saints, Jesus not worried about this world system. When they have issues, it's not bothering him. He good. He prophesied that this will happen to them. His system is full of riches. It's full of abundance. <clears throat> it's, full, it's full of more than enough. His system is full of every house, every car, every financial blessing that you want to have. It's already in his system. And when you sowing, you in that same system to receive all those things so that they'll take place in your life. So that you'll have it in possession. His system is not lacking nothing. And see, when you sowing, you're saturated with the heavenly economy, the heavenly currency, because Jesus is the creator of money. He's the creator of all financial transferences. And he's always looking for somebody that he can make a multimillionaire, a multi-billionaire. He always looking for somebody that he can sit on them with wealth. See, saints, when you sow, God sits on you. And, and <clears throat> when he's sitting on you, uh, he's positioning you or he's positioned on you so that you'll prosper. He's sitting on you so that you could have more than what you need, more than what you desire. And what God often does is he knows how to uh, pitch you around sores so that you can stay in that sowing anointing so that you won't be involved in dishonoring God and missing financial increase and being in a famine and being in destruction. What did Job chapter 5, 22 say? You shall laugh at famine and destruction. Why are you laughing at famine? Because you got plenty of money. You can't laugh at a famine if you're in the famine. So watch this. Is the world's government going through a famine? Yes. Why are you able to laugh at the famine? Because it does not involve you. You are on God's system. You are a Joseph in 2019. And Joseph had the wisdom of how to have money in the midst of a time, seven years of famine. You are an Isaac in your generation. The same way Isaac was in a famine and he sold his way out. He was not having any issues with anything or anybody because he sold his way out. He sold his way out. He sold his way out. There was nothing stopping his money, stopping his provision, because the seed was talking for Joe, uh, Isaac. The seed spoke on his behalf and the famine had to be quiet. See, when the seed speak, all your enemies got to shut up. When the seed talk, all your famines, your debts got to be quiet. It can't talk when your seed talking. Your seed get the whole floor and it silence everybody. 
Nobody can talk over your sowing. Nobody can talk over your giving. When you sowing, there's no demon that could talk over your finances. <clears throat> when the devil say, you got to wait another five months, your seed will say, no, oh, uh-uh. The anointing too strong right now. In five minutes, something about to take place. Check your gates. Check your gates. Every five minutes. Every five minutes, there's angels just swarming in your situation. There's angels moving in your situation. God won't let you stay in the same predicament. Because the seed is advocating for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It won't, it, it won't let you stay in the same predicament. God won't let you stay in the same, same issue. The seed is talking up. And when the seed talk, it talk with authority. It talk with grace. God, God created the seed so that even when he tell you not to do nothing to your enemies, your seed will do all the fighting. Your seed will do all the talking. Your seed will do all the walking. Your seed will do all the negotiation. Your seed is in negotiation with the minister of finances. Your seed is in conversation with prosperity angels. They know once that seed go out your hand that you ready for God to bring you into new finances, new increase, new prosperity, new wealth, new deliverance, new wisdom, new connections, new environment, new arrangements, new prosperity, all of that. They know already the seed will talk on your behalf and let every single demon know that God raising you up to walk in wealth and riches. The seed will talk on your behalf and let every spirit know in your region, in your city, in your state, that it got to let go of your money. It got to let go of your children. It got to let go of your health. It got to let go of your mind. It got to let go of your peace, your joy. Every demon will begin to bow at the, at the face of the sower. It can't override the sower. The sower stands strong when everybody else is weak. The sower is standing strong when everybody else is going through issues. The sower got all power and authority in heaven and on earth. Why did Jesus say, I got all power in heaven and on earth? Because Jesus received that authority. He was a giver. He was a sower. The Bible said, remember the, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's better for you to give than, than for you to receive. It's more blessed. Jesus was moving in divine empowerment. Because he was a giver, he was a sower. He sold his way out. And he had authority in heaven and on earth. He had authority to call those things that be not as though they were. See, we dealing with a supernatural Jesus that no canker worm, palmer worm, locust, caterpillar can stop. Remember, this is his army. Jesus created the army that will fight the finances of the saints so that you can sow your way out, so that you can get so disturbed with the, with the system of bondage that you will sow your way out, that you would not stay underneath Pharaoh's bondage but you'll release your seed. Jesus is the one over the army. If he the one over the army, that means whatever he says goes. That means if he tells the demons to release your money, 
they got to release your money because he over all those spirits. He over all those financial demons. So when he say money coming, money got to come. When he lose wealth, wealth is loose. He has given you the keys so that you can loose it, so that you can release it, so that you can cause it to manifest. That power is on you. So what you gonna say? Money coming. Money coming. What? We in here. Money coming. Money moving. Money coming. We in it. Money coming.